Hi guys, Dane here. Today I'm going to be making a start at the very least on my review of The Testaments by Margaret Atwood. So this is the sequel to The Handmaid's Tale. As always, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. I will say that even though it's a sequel and it does work better if you read The Handmaid's Tale first, you don't have to. You could read this as a standalone if you wanted to. I don't know why you would, but you could. So, the blurb. Dane reads... Our time together is about to begin, my reader. Possibly you will view these pages of mine as a fragile treasure box to be opened with the utmost care. Possibly you will tear them apart or burn them. That often happens with words. You hold in your hands a dangerous weapon loaded with the secrets of three women from Gilead. They are risking their lives for you, for all of us. Before you enter their world, you might want to arm yourself with these thoughts. Knowledge is power and history does not repeat itself, but it rhymes. And speaking of history, so one thing that Atwood does and uh, works really well is everything that she writes about in these books happened at some point to women in history. They didn't necessarily all happen in the same time or in the same place, um, but they do all have historical precedent. Anyway, so we get this little paragraph which near the beginning helps to set the scene, I think. What my father was doing in there was said to be very important. The important things that men did, too important for females to meddle with because they had smaller brains that were incapable of thinking large thoughts, according to Aunt Vidala, who taught us religion. It would be like trying to teach a cat to crochet, said Arneste, who taught us crafts, and that would make us laugh because how ridiculous, cats didn't even have fingers. Unless you're watching the Cravendale milk advert. Yeah, she's listening to that, somebody sing that, as I lay me down to sleep, pray the Lord my soul to keep thing, the one that's in Enter Sandman. I mean, yeah, there were a couple of things about this song that bothered me. First of all, the angels. I know they were supposed to be the kind of angels with white nightgowns and feathers, but that was not how I pictured them. I pictured them as our kind of angels, men in black uniforms with cloth wings sewn onto their outfits and guns. I did not like the thought of four angels with guns standing around my bed as I slept, because they were men after all, so what about the parts of me that might stick out from under the blankets? My feet, for instance. Wouldn't that inflame their urges? It would, there was no way around it. So the four angels were not a restful thought. Also, it was not encouraging to pray about dying in your sleep. I did not think I would, but what if I did? And what was my soul like, that part the angels would carry away? Tabitha said it was the spirit part and did not die when your body did, which was supposed to be a cheerful idea. But what did it look like, my soul? I pictured it as just like me, only much smaller. As small as the little girl in my dollhouse. It was inside me, so maybe it was the same thing as the invaluable treasure that Aunt Vidala said we had to guard so carefully. You could lose your soul, said Aunt Vidala, blowing her nose, in which case it would topple over the verge and hurtle down and endlessly down and catch on fire, just like the goatish men. This was a thing I very much wished to avoid. And I thought this was interesting. Um, and probably true of our world as well. I regarded my reflection. The inventor of the mirror did few of us any favours. We must have been happier before we knew what we looked like. It could be worse, I told myself. My face betrays no signs of weakness. It retains its leathery texture, its character bestowing mole on the chin, its etching of familiar line. And she has a personal selection of prescribed books that are off limit to the lower ranks. Jane Eyre, Anna Karenina, Tess of the D'Urbervilles, Paradise Lost, Lives of Girls and Women. What a moral panic each one of them would cause if set loose amongst the supplicants. And um, there's talk of a photographer getting people to pose for the photographs. Um, it says, it's as if they lived their lives twice, once in reality and the second time for the photo. Which I think is pretty relevant to the world we live in today. And uh, yeah, so the character goes to a protest that turns into a riot. And uh, we get, when I saw the footage I thought, now I know what it feels like to be in a riot. It feels like drowning, not that I'd ever drowned. Well I've been in a riot. It start, again, similar things started as a protest, turned into a riot. It didn't feel like drowning, it was just very surreal, it felt like dreaming. Yeah, one of the characters turned 16 and uh, her, par her parent, in inverted commas, says There are some things Neil and I want to tell you now that you're old enough. Okay, I said, I thought this was going to be about boys and what consent meant, which I'd heard enough about at school. It was bound to be awkward, but I would have to get through it. And it wasn't about that, but they never get to have this conversation. And I thought this was interesting because I experienced this myself. By this time I was feeling glum, which is one of the effects a birthday can have. You're expecting a magic transformation, but then it doesn't happen. And uh, this is part of Transcript of Witness Testimony 369A. Um, and it's talking about the Bible, and it says, Withereth, withereth. It was like lisping, as if God did not know how to speak clearly. A lot of us had stumbled over that word while reciting it. And um, basically, one of the people who's in Gilead recording what's happening, um, we get this. I record, I record, though to no end I often fear. The black drawing ink I've been using is running out. Soon I will switch to blue. Requisitioning a bottle from the Vidala school supply should not be difficult. They teach drawing there. We aunts used to be able to obtain ballpoint pens through the grey market, but no longer. Our new Brunswick based supplier has been arrested, having snuck under the radar once too often. Imagine a world in which you have to go to the black market to get a pen. 
And we get, not for nothing do we at Ardu or Hall say pen is envy. Which obviously if you put that together it says penis envy. And I thought this was cool. We, took, we learned about the uh, deck of cards they use in Gilead. The deck I used was normal in Gilead. But in case this deck is not known to the outside world I will describe it. Naturally there were not any letters on the ace, king, queen or jack cards. Nor were there any numbers on the number cards. The aces were a large eye looking out of a cloud. Kings wore commander uniforms. Queens wore wives and jacks were aunts. The face cards were the most powerful cards. Of the suits, spades were angels, clubs were guardians, diamonds were marthas, and hearts were handmaids. Each face card had a border of smaller figures. A wife of angels would have a blue wife with a border of small black clad angels, and a commander of handmaids would have a border of tiny handmaids. And further to that, this is interesting too. Later, once I had access to the Ardua Hall Library, I researched these cards. Far back in history, hearts were once chalices. Perhaps that is why the handmaids were hearts. They were precious containers. And there's a reference to when there were executions. Uh, everyone's given a rifle. Some of the rifles contain blanks, some don't. But they'll all be killers nonetheless because it's the thought that count. Little line here which is very true. I've noticed since that some kinds of men like to bully beautiful women. And uh, when sort of Gilead was first being established, they were getting women um, to help subjugate the women. And um, one of them goes, I'm sure we can help, but it would take a considerable amount of work. Women have been told for so long that they can achieve equality in the professional and public spheres. They were not welcome the, I sought for a word, the segregation. It was always a cruelty to promise them equality, he said, since by their nature they can never achieve it. And we got a girl who uh, has a phobia of penises. Penises, I said thoughtfully, them again. In attempted suicide to young girls, this is often the case. Perhaps we need to change our educational curriculum, I thought. Less fear-mongering, fewer centaur-like ravishers and male genitalia bursting into flame. But if we were to put too much emphasis on the theoretical delights of sex, the result would almost certainly be curiosity and experimentation, followed by moral degeneracy and public stonings. And here we get some thoughts of suicide, which is pretty much a natural response you would expect for living in this horrible society. As the days ticked past, I became more desperate. Where was the exit? I had no gun. I had no lethal pills. I remembered a story circulated by Shunamit at school about someone's handmaid who had swallowed drain cleaner. The whole bottom part of her face came off, Shunamit had whispered with delight. It just dissolved. It was like fizzing. I hadn't believed her at the time, though now I did. A bathtub filled with water, but I would gasp and splutter and come up for air, and I couldn't attach a stone to myself in the bath, unlike in a lake or a river or the sea. But there was no way I could get to a lake or a river or the sea. Maybe I would have to go through with the ceremony and then murder Commander Judd on the wedding night, stick a purloined knife into his neck, then into mine. There would be a lot of blood to get out of the sheets, but it wouldn't be, but it wouldn't be me doing the scrubbing. I pictured the dismay on Paula's face when she walked into the slaughter chamber, such a butcher shop, and there went her social standing. These scenarios were fantasies, of course. Underneath this web spinning, I knew I could never kill myself or murder anyone. I remembered Becca's fierce expression when she'd slashed her wrist. She'd been serious about it. She'd really been prepared to die. She was strong in a way that I was not. I would never have her resolve. I like this, uh, the Ardua Hall holograph. This chapter starts, all things come to she who waits. Time wounds all heals. Patience is a virtue, vengeance is mine. These hoary chestnuts are not always true, but they are sometimes true. Here's one that is always true. Everything's in the timing, like jokes. The great line here, innocent men denying their guilt sound exactly like guilty men, as I'm sure you have noticed my reader. Listeners are inclined to believe neither. And we get this, no one wants to die, but some people don't want to live in any of the ways that are allowed. And we get, this was what the aunts meant then when they said women's minds were too weak for reading. We would crumble, we would fall apart under the contradictions, we would not be able to hold firm. And Jade mentions a bucket list and we get, why is it called that? It's from kick the bucket, said Jade, it's just a saying. Then seeing our puzzled look, she continued, I think it's from when they used to hang people from trees. They'd make them stand on a bucket and then hang them and their feet would kick and naturally they would kick the bucket. Just my guess. That's not how we hang people here, said Becca. So all in all, The Testaments by Margaret Atwood, a very good sequel to The Handmaid's Tale. They're both just incredibly written books. This one I enjoyed slightly less, so for that reason I gave it a 4.5 out of 5. But it is a strong one, a strong contender for my book of the year. And I definitely suggest you read it. Uh, read The Handmaid's Tale as well, they are both incredible. So there we have it, that's what I made of The Testaments by Margaret Atwood. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.